The UK, Canada, South Africa and New Zealand has the Women's Institute, but Australia has the country's Women's Association. So let's learn some more, shall we? You ever heard of the Country Women's Association? Yes. What's it mean to you? Um, just a group of women that try to help people out in situations. The what? The Country Women's Association. I don't know, I've never heard of it. So I'm assuming it's something similar to the Women's Institute that we have. And I've always associated the Women's Institute as a lot of old ladies uh, gossiping, maybe doing a bake sale for charities. Is this the same? And actually, is my assumption of the Women's Institute correct? Let's hold that first. It may not be correct. It has been called the Chinwaggers Association. <laughs> oh, well, I'd say it's more or less a glass session. <laughs> Cranky Women's Association. Chicks with ambition. Chicks with ambition. Cask Wine Appreciation Society. No, Crohn's with Alzheimer's. I don't think our members realise what a powerful force they are. Chicks with attitude, that's us, and we like that. It's cool. Chick with attitude. <laughs> that sounds funny from that little old lady. For almost a century, the Country Women's Association has been at the heart of rural Australia. Known for their exceptional tea and scone making skills and handicrafts, the ladies of the CWA can sometimes look like they've stepped out from a past era. I think I am pretty much correct on what they do. And I think they are basically the same as our Women's Institute. Lots of older ladies normally uh, baking baking cakes and things to sell to make money uh, for charities and, and good causes. Rural Australia was a male dominated landscape. Women were working in the home and on the farms too, in the background, often unseen. But across our wide brown land, women were in dire need. And the seed would soon be planted for Australia's rural women to unite. It all began when a Sydney woman journalist wrote in the Stock and Station Journal of the need for a union of country women. This led to a Bush Women's Conference, coinciding with the Sydney Easter Show in 1922. The organisers were extremely worried that no one would come. And then on the first day, they were overwhelmed with the number of women who had arrived, who'd come on horse and cart and however they could get to Sydney. They were fighting for all sorts of things. Then. I think it's interesting, isn't it? I think that you could look at this in any walk of life. If you're feeling in a certain way, and, and in this side of things, a woman who is frustrated uh, for certain reasons, then there will be other people that feel like that. So it's doing something like this was probably a shot in the dark and more hopeful than anything. But clearly it worked. Then there were no services, no facilities, no hospitals to care for their children. Hundreds came, and the stories poured out. The overwhelming isolation of farm life, the constant fear of sickness in the family, the feeling of hopelessness. The women wouldn't want to talk to their husbands about it. So then when they found this whole group of people that they could talk to and have the same issues and maybe provide some answers for each other that just common ground provides, that um, it would have just, uh, you know, I can't imagine what it would have been like. Empowered and energised, they decided to form the Country Women's Association. Their top priorities were health, isolation, community services, and education. They'd sort of 
found like-minded people who wanted the same things they did, so there was obviously power in numbers, and it just it took off very quickly, very quickly. With their newfound sense of solidarity, the women worked fast. Can I just say, I love some of these old images. I really do look, like looking back at the past and seeing what life was like, and, and you can almost think, it, it, when you look at these images, things were so much like they are now, but completely different. I just think it's fascinating. By 1923, there were 68 branches across New South Wales, 17 restrooms, two seaside holiday homes, hmm. and much needed baby centres for mothers and children. In those days, I don't think there were very many public amenities apart from in the pubs. And women, and particularly children, weren't allowed in pubs. The women's place was to stay home. They were not supposed to go out. The men folk were a little bit sarcastic to a certain thing. My, I shouldn't say it, but my husband used to call us the Cranky Women's Association. <laughs> I, I think that's probably something you can laugh about now. Um, and you can actually understand why. If, if, if originally they got together partly to discuss their problems and because of how isolated they were, you can understand why you get the image of them just gossiping with each other because they want to be there to talk to each other and and just I don't know um feel like they have people with the same problems and I think you can probably laugh at that now but back then you know I do feel women had a rough ride the cranky women he's dead and gone so he won't know what I said about him <laughs> brilliant Two broke out. The CWA was there at the ready. The ladies put their home craft skills to work. They made camouflage nets from rope, sewed vests from sheep fleece, and knitted thousands of socks. I tell you what, um, and, and I know this from the UK uh, f during the wars, things like this, because obviously in the UK, women were relied upon to do things like this. And actually after the war, it gave them a real sense of being able to do what the men do, being able to work. And that really drove forwards the empowerment of women. Just, just a little thing for you there. They also added extra CWA treats for the soldiers. They used to send uh, Anzac biscuits and boxes of goodies over to the soldiers. We made some more Anzac biscuits the other day, actually. We had a, our uh, President's Day for our bowls club and we made some Anzac biscuits. Delicious. We do that still. We did that when they were in Afghanistan and we got lovely letters back from <laughs> soldiers that received them. From the early days, the ladies of the CWA quickly established themselves as prize-winning cooks. Judy and ladies from all over Australia would wrap up their cakes and travel from their farms to hand deliver them to the judges. It may be a surprise to many, but the CWA isn't only for women in the country. It has branches in the city too. Greystange CWA in Sydney's western suburbs operates out of the local primary school. People do say to us, Greystones, country? That's not country. But in Greystones, and we have trees, so we're good. I think there's a cow. Hi, Pauline, good to see you, Dal. Come sit down. Hey, we've got some new people today. Hi, yes. Pauline. There you Hi. go, darling. Hi. Sit there. Um, welcome, everyone, today. Um, a special welcome to Dorothy, our secretary from Nepean Group. Woohoo! <laughs> Lobbying government has always been a major part of the CWA's mission, ever adapting to the issues of the day. This week on Thursday, um, it was tabled in the CWA had uh, the local member from, I think it was Parks, tabled a petition in um, Parliament. And when it's an issue they're passionate about, the CWA ladies are not afraid to make some noise. I guess that's one of the reasons why we're trying to change the tea and scones image is because we have lobbied, lobbied over the years very successfully for um, various improvements to things. 
The CWA's pragmatic and persistent style of lobbying has achieved a lot over the years. Compulsory seatbelts, white lines on the edge of roads, flashing speed signs in school zones, to no name way. just a few. A, a, a women's a women's sort of union has done those things. Wow, that's incredible. So it started, you know, it started off um, by being a group of women able to get together, um, discuss what's going on in their lives and realize that the other women are doing having the same issues um, to then having movements, basically. But I suppose if you've got that many people in a group, you can push things through to make life better as awesome. I, I, you know, you, it's right about the image of tea and scones, but it's so much more than that. I always say you can have a say with CWA. Do you believe that the Country Women's Association born in this era many years ago is keeping pace with the times or is it dying on its feet? I certainly would not say that it was dying on its feet. It's keeping pace. We have always been very, very aware of the winds of change. And so when one project that we have thought was very, very necessary at the time has died because the need has gone, we immediately take up something else. And it's a changing organisation. And yet the old ideals are still there. See, this is the thing with the Women's Institute as well. I'm thinking, how are there still people that like are a part of this? You know, you think as things changes, it's like working men's clubs or social clubs. You think, well, do people really still go in that? With with the, the new era of, of younger people, is this still a thing that is, is really um, something that is used? And uh, do people really want to be a part of this? But certainly in this case, now, this is a clip from a while ago, but it's showing... It's showing that people, women, still want to be a part of this and still want to use it as a, as a platform to make things better at the same time. And they are never forgotten. Today, the CWA is the largest women's organisation in Australia with a membership of over 20,000. Shame it's not more than that. That's not a huge number, but it's still, um, it's still enough to be a movement if needed. Moving along, ladies. <laughs> First one we've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an awesome story. It's an awesome story how, how you know, the original reason for the women to get together has evolved into something more meaningful um, for people around them. It's not just about those individual women anymore. It's about um, making life better for all women and, and men as well. An incredible story. Um, I, 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 I would love to know how much is how much is the same as the Women's Institute we have here. But it's interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I will catch you next time.